German press admits 280 counts of sexual abuse. A German Catholic priest has admitted 280 counts of sexual abuse involving three boys in the past decade, saying he did not think he was doing any harm. Named only as Andres L., the priest told a court in Brunswick that he had first abused a nine-year-old son of a widowed woman parishioner. After being banned by his diocese from making further contact with the boy, he abused two brothers aged 9 and 13. Thousands of Germans have left the church over revelations of abuse. About 180,000 renounced their Catholicism in 2010, up to 40% from previous year, the German broadcaster Du Chevalle reports. Pope Benedict XV, a German by birth, briefly met victims of sexual abuse by praise when he visited his native land in September, expressing deep compassion and regret at their suffering. The priest on trial, Brownswick, faces minimum prison sentence of between six and six and a half years. He was arrested during the summer after the mother of his earlier victim reported him to the authorities. She acted after her son, now aged 70, and revealed to her the abuse he had undergone for two years. Sexual assaults were made on the three boys in varying settings, at the priest's house, on skiing holidays, in a parent or home, on a trip to Disneyland Paris, and at a church shortly before Mass. The priest who covered his face with a ring binder as he went into the court on Thursday said that while working in Brownsvig in 2004, he had begun a close relationship with the widow. When Father Andres was moved to Salskidder, her son often spent weekends with him and the two would go off on short trips. He would give the boy presents such as a camera and a mobile phone, etc. Abuse would often occur three times a weekend. The priest said it had not been his intention to get close to the boy sexually and that it had never occurred to him that he was doing harm. When the mother began to suspect her son's relations with the priest were inappropriately close, she approached the diocese of Hilsheim, the priest's employer, which forbade further contact with the boy. The abuse of the two brothers then began under similar circumstances, the court heard. After contact with these victims was also forbidden, the priest approached his first victim again, writing him a letter. It was that then the truth about the abuse emerged. It was never my impression that the children did not consent, the priest was quoted as saying at the trial. When asked in the court he was a pedophile, he replied according to local newspaper Brownsweger Zithung, it would be wrong to say no, but to say yes we also fall short of truth. When a prosecutor asked him in court if he thought a father would do this to his children, he was silent. About 2,800 pornographic images were found on the priest's computer, including several of his victims. Correspondents say members of the public who were in the courtroom watched the trial with faces rigid from shock. They included parishioners from St. Joseph's Church in Salzgitter, where Father Andres had once been a respected priest, according to Germany's Spiegel magazine. U.S. military identifies all four urinating Marines. All four U.S. Marines seen in a video apparently urinating on dead of guns have been identified by American military investigators, U.S. media say. Two of the men have already been interviewed by the U.S. Navy's criminal investigation branch. The names of the men who are thought to be Marine snippers have not been released. It's understood they served in Helmand province and were from a battalion based at Camp Lee June, North Carolina. U.S. media reported that the unit belonged to the 3rd Battalion, 2nd Marine Regiment, but then two of the men and the battalion commander had moved on to the other assignments before the video became public. 
The battalion has had a range of deployments, including Iraq, Afghanistan, Guantanamo Bay, and fighting wildfires in the U.S. state of Idaho. The video which was posted online appears to show the troops standing over the bodies of several Afghans, at least one of whom is covered with blood. A man's voice is heard saying, have a great day, buddy. The clip has been called disgusting and inhuman by both U.S. and Afghan officials. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expressed her dismay at the images while Afghan President Hamid Karzai requested more severe punishment for those responsible. India declared polio free almost. That will mean only three polio endemic countries are left, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Nigeria. Sona Barea, spokesman for the Polio Eradication Program at the World Health Organization, said this was very significant, not just for India, but the global campaign as a whole. In a few weeks, if pending samples test negative for the virus, India will be officially regarded as free from polio for the first time in the history. The World Health Organization described this as a critical milestone. India was once seen as a polio epicenter, the country where the virus was most difficult to tackle. India has battled hard for this moment and if the outstanding test proof negative as expected, the World Health Organization WHO will officially declare that India has stopped indigenous transmission. India's success is proof, she told the reporters, that it's globally, biologically and technically feasible to eradicate polio. India's final reservoir for virus were in two of its poorest and most populous states, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Most are also have large migrant populations and weak health infrastructures. All this made the process of comprehensive vaccination more challenging. We'll move on to the business world. Markets fall on Eurozone downgrade reports. World stock markets have fallen on reports that rating agency standard and poor is about to downgrade some Eurozone countries. Rumors that France and Austria were set to lose their top AAA ratings sent London's FTSE 100 and Frankfurt's DAX down by 0.7%, while the Dow Jones in New York fell by 0.8%. However, reports suggest Germany will not lose its AAA rating. S&Ps declined to common, but an announcement is expected later. The euro has its 16-month low against the dollar of dollars 1.263. It also dropped against pound hovering at about 82.22 pence, the lowest level since September 2010. The talk of a downgrade to French and Austrian debt has sent the euro into sharp declines, as well as other risky assets, said Richard Driver, analyst at Caxton FX. While it's not an official statement, it looks like an unnamed government source has triggered the speculation. The market has certainly taken it very seriously. Yeah, I mean, part of the, you know, if you just take, for example, the Moody's downgrade of Spain today, okay, it's still, I think, double A1, so it's hardly, you know, junk or anything like that. But the investor base for sovereign debt in Europe actually is shrinking because the pricing models have blown up. People owned Spain and Portugal and Ireland not because they were great credits but because of the spread and because it was stable. Now of course that's all been shot to pieces so the investor base is shrinking and the supply of, of issuance from these governments obviously is continuing to rise so there's a supply and demand problem and there's a solvency problem and I think that the the idea that you've got countries with huge debt burdens but no growth, which is what Moody's were particularly concerned about, uh, I think is a kind of a lethal cocktail. Welcome to the world of science. <music> Royal Society offers a way to overhaul ICT teaching. The Royal Society has suggested ways the government can overhaul information and communication technology, ICT, teaching in schools.
It follows promises from Education Secretary Michel Gove to scrap the way subject is taught currently. The body, which oversees UK sciences, recommends dividing computing into distinct subjects such as computer science and digital literacy. It said the government must be more to recruit specialist ICT teachers. The report was led by Professor Steve Ferber, the designer of the BBC Micro, widely acknowledged that as one of the first educational computers. He was commissioned to investigate why there has been a chronic decline in the numbers of students studying ICT and computing. The publication of this report is timely following just days after Mr. Goh's speech to educationists in which he said current ICD lessons were demotivating and dull. Mr. Goh pledged that from September the government will introduce flexible curriculum in computer science and programming designed with the help of universities and industry. And in sports! Triathletes seek Olympics in remote Argentine town. Manuel Huerta, professional triathlete from Miami, is not particularly religious, but he has been praying a lot in preparation for his next race. Not that he will finish first, but merely that he and his bike will survive the journey to the start. So far, praying has not just sufficed. Huerta's dollars 5000 Orbia Arco bike did not make the way connecting flight to Buenos Aires from Miami. It arrived a day later than it did, pushing back the last leg of a 26-hour trip. At least his bus did not stall in summer heat on Bambi 8 or drive past hundreds of miles of cow pastures to La Paz. A triathlon scheduled for Sunday in the heart of remote Pueblo in northeast Argentina has drawn a stacked professional field. It kicks off the 2012 qualifying season for the Summer Games in London, the fourth Olympics in which the triathlon has been included. For those who used competing in places like Lake Placid in Y Hamburg, Germany, and Kona, Hawaii, La Paz may be the most exotic event of the year. When I first heard there were piranhas in the river where I swim, I felt a little nervous, said Huerta, 27, who has competed in La Paz three times. But people in the town tell me they are not actually the dangerous kind. Now before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main point. U.S. to exchange ambassadors with Burma. Norway Code orders new psychiatric tests on Breivik. Pakistan Prime Minister Gilani seeks Parliament's support in crisis. German priest admits 280 counts of sexual abuse. U.S. military identifies all four urinating marines. India on course to be declared polio free. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. You must be with us in the continuing sessions of news analysis. So, thank you once again.